All right. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome um, to, to those that have, have maybe already been to uh, one of our other uh, webinar sessions this week. Thanks for returning, as Alyssa said. And uh, welcome to the Curator webinar. This is really exciting for us as this is a bit of a new format to kick off the season or the, the fall. Um, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Bert Slesser, and I'm an instructional design technologist and faculty developer at Georgian College. And I spend a lot of time doing a lot of ed tech troubleshooting, but also, uh, you know, just helping uh, faculty with their their digital uh, pedagogy, for lack of a, a better uh, uh, definition. And uh, Charlotte is one of our other uh, course instructors or program facilitators uh, that helps and, and works for uh, as part of our Ontario Extend uh, uh, team. And she will be one of the facilitators that if you decide to uh, be a part and join uh, the Ontario Extend uh, 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 badging program and whatnot and get into the, uh, the modules, uh, she will, you'll probably end up meeting her. She's one of our uh, facilitators and uh, we'll be running uh, many sessions together. And then I'll pass it over to Alyssa. Hi, everybody again. Um, my name is Alyssa Bigelow, and uh, I'm an instructional design technologist. Uh, and I'm also a program facilitator for the Ontario Extend program. So I work with Bert and Charlotte, and we manage the, um, the communities of practice around the Ontario Extend modules. So we are the, the three that you will be interacting with um, throughout your journey. So I'll just say uh, welcome, you know, I will start with just a, a quick introduction in terms of uh, maybe introducing yourself in the chat. It'd be great to let, uh, let us know uh, who you are, where you're from, maybe, you know, what department you, uh, you work in. And as you do that, I'm going to kind of go through just some of these housekeeping uh, procedures. Uh, so please mute your microphone if you're, if you're not speaking. If you do want to speak, on the other hand, feel free to use the chat or you can unmute your mic and, and ask a question. We, we appreciate the, uh, the live audience and the feedback and the connection. Uh, I know that sometimes whenever I go into a, a meeting, I tend to go into student mode and I turn my camera off and I turn my microphone off and I just listen, uh, but we encourage uh, conversation. Uh, you can use the closed captioning button to enable uh, uh, closed captioning on, de on, on demand for your device and then refer to the chat window as well if you want to access the simultaneous French translation and PowerPoint presentation. And Alyssa already mentioned this, but the uh, session will be recorded as well. So maybe um, uh, I'll let Alyssa do the land acknowledgement and then maybe we can go in and just kind of go through the chat, Alyssa, and, and just uh, uh, welcome people in and get a, a sense of where everyone's coming from today. Yeah, that sounds great, Bert. Thank you. Um, I'm just pasting some links into the chat here, I think. Um, or, my, or my Zoom has decided to... Oh, there we go. Okay. All good. Oh, minor heart attack yet again. Um, I had some technical difficulties yesterday with, with Zoom, uh, so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen again today. Um, so I will begin with the land acknowledgement. Um, I would like to begin by honoring and acknowledging that the offices of eCampus Ontario are located on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. I recognize and am grateful for the legacy of all past, present, and future generations of the first peoples of this land. I invite you to uh, in this call today to advance your own personal journey towards truth and reconciliation and ask how we can move from acknowledgement to action. Part of my journey has been to learn more about the nine Indigenous institutes in Ontario, which are Indigenous governed and operated institutions that provide a culturally responsive learning environment for students and their families. Um, so we've put the links into the chat and you're very welcome to have a, have a look at those and, and learn more. That's great. Awesome. So I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat as we uh, move forward in the in the presentation here. And uh, just going to check. It. So we have uh, Ivan, I think Ivan. Yeah, Ivan was here from from uh, yesterday. So thanks for coming back, Ivan. We appreciate that. 
And then we have Doreen from St. Clair College in Windsor, welcome. And we have Irene from St. Clair College as well. Uh, very cool, good. right on. She completed the Empowered each other? Educator badge. Do, do uh, Doreen and I, Doreen and Irene. <laughs> okay, no, that's awesome. There we go. Oh, wonderful. So nice. That's great. All right. Um, okay, so Perfect. we'll uh, we'll continue on and and start by giving you just a little bit of information about the Ontario Extend uh, Learning Program uh, for Higher Education. Um, so today, what we'll be doing is investigating one of the six modules, um, the curator module. Uh, so we'll be looking at some OERs and uh, and things like that today. So. Uh... In uh, 2017, uh, so we'll, I'll give you a quick overview of the Ontario Extend program. It launched back in 2017, and the organization identified a need for professional learning um, and to help underpin a, a foundational approach to technology enabled and online teaching. Uh, the Ontario Extend module is a suite of professional learning resources, and those resources are aiming to empower you as an educator to explore a range of technologies and, and different pedagogical practices that you can use online um, and uh, technology-enabled uh, teaching and learning. So the core of it is that, and, and the intent is that the resources are providing you the basis for a more deliberate course design and, and um, digital pedagogical practice. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but it is, uh, it's like the, the spirit of the Ontario Extend program. So I think right around when COVID happened, you know, our, our numbers increased just a little bit and people realized sort of the, the benefit of, of moving to this uh, type of programming, this type of thinking and this type of instruction. So it's been really great. Uh, the Ontario Extend program, there's six modules and each module um, is, is roughly four to six hours in length. And you know, some people complete them in shorter than that time and other people complete them longer than that time. So you have to keep in mind that, you know, it depends on, on your own uh, stride and how much, uh, you know, time you really want to put into it. And uh, you can easily go down. We make the joke quite often that you can easily go down a rabbit hole. But if you keep yourself on track, then it's you could definitely hit the, uh, the four hours or under mark. Um, the digital badges. Uh, once you complete a module, then you get a digital badge. So it's it's that simple. And then once you get all six badges, there's six in total, then you get a empowered educator uh, milestone badge uh, as a micro credential. All the modules are self paced. Uh, they're they're uh, um, self paced. They're collaborative. And when we really mean self-paced, we legitimately mean that. There is no firm timeline that you have to adhere to. So a lot of faculty say, you know, I don't know if I can complete it in two weeks. That's fine. You can complete it in a month, two months. It's it's really up to you and you can kind of just go through it uh, when you need to. So it's very flexible professional development um, that works well for, for any educator in almost any situation. All of our, our programming is, is CC, so open, openly licensed in English and French. Um, and it's a you know, learning opportunity for anyone who's interested in building up their digital skills for, for teaching and learning. Um, the uh, participant diversity is, is quite broad. Uh, even in today, you know, we're going to get people from all different places. And I think that's the, one of the benefits of the Ontario STEM program. If you ever decide to connect with us at a synchronous level, the uh, people that you meet in the program are, are from all different places. Uh, a lot of them are instructional designers. A lot of them are faculty. Some of them are faculty developers. You're getting a, a wide breadth of, of individuals that are coming together and to enhance their skills. So you, you usually connect with others and you can grow your network and you can and 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 just collaborate a little bit outside of of on, Ontario Extend as well and uh, learn from each other. So I'm not going to talk about you know all the details of each of these badges but I will just do a quick overview. Um, these are the six badges so that the teacher for learning badge, uh, the curator, the technologist, 
Uh, then we have the collaborator, the experimenter, and the scholar. Uh, the, the framework of, of this empowered educator micro-credentials, so once you complete all six, is based on the anatomy of the 21st century educator, as described by Simon Bates. And um, each one of these modules is geared to just strengthen your, your digital ped pedagogy. So the first one, Teacher for Learning, you know, this is really about enhancing your essential uh, teaching practices. So a lot of these, uh, you know, we did one, this a webinar this morning, uh, or not this morning, sorry, Wednesday uh, this week, um, sorry, Tuesday this week, uh, it was Teacher for Learning. And we took a, a few snippets out of that, that module, and it is really sort of those grounding uh, experiences and, and uh, teaching practices that we uh, focused on in that, in that specific uh, module in that webinar. The curator is what we'll get to talk about today. This is heavily focused on uh, open educational resources and um, growing your, your, um, uh, your ability to, to, to navigate the resources. There are so many uh, uh, repositories and referatories that you can uh, connect with to access OERs. There are also the technologist badge, which is just a nice way to kind of dig into some new technology and to see how it can impact uh, either your teaching strategy or, or um, that uh, improve the tech that you're already using. Uh, collaborator is a great way to, uh, it's to see or share and enhance your, your own educational approaches. Uh, and it's looking at maybe activities or projects that you're already working on and seeing, you know, what types of collaboration uh, do we uh, use? What kind of modes do we use to collaborate with others? And it kind of extends your network and helps you understand how to, how to keep growing it as well. Uh, Experimenter is one of my favorites. Uh, you know, it's about experimenting with not only technology, but it's, it's experimenting with strategies and reflecting on your experiences and being willing to, to kind of take that experimenter mindset with you into each scenario as you're trying uh, a new, um, you know, teaching practices. And lastly, scholar, scholar uh, module, uh, we look at uh, the scholarship of teaching in this and seeing how you can apply it to your own practice as you move forward. Um, uh, if you're working on specific, uh, you know, research or development within your program area. So for today's session, um, we're going to be looking at the curator module um, and uh, the outcome of that module um, when you complete it in full um, what, we're going to examine the process, the value, and the impact of collecting and combining resources, when, um, existing resources, when we create content. Uh, the curator um, module is really, um, it's a really interesting module because um, it's about stuff that you already do um, without even realizing that you're already doing it. So it's a really, it's kind of an eye-opening um, uh, module to get into. So that's what we'll be looking at through the curator module. And we have some objectives as well. Um, so we will touch on Creative Commons a little bit um, in, in a little bit. Um, we do go into more depth in our facilitated sessions um, and uh, on uh, through the Ontario Extend um, program, uh, but we'll touch on a, a couple of key points today. Um, you're going to look at different strategies um, for uh, developing uh, and uh, evaluating and sharing learning resources, um, and then uh, explore curation tools to align to specific preferences and needs. So that's what we'll, we'll try and be getting to. Um, so the curator module, um, uh, Bert explained, you know, there's, there's six of the modules, um, and each one of them has a series of tasks for you to complete. Um, so it's not just reading through the material, you, you have to do some things to, to earn the badge. Um, and in the curator module, uh, there are five different activities uh, for you to complete. And um, today uh, we've picked out a couple of short ones uh, to hopefully get you started um, with, with working on the curator module. Um, so hopefully after we finish going through some things here, you'll have you know, something that you, you can submit and, and start your journey in the curator module. 
Um, so on the right hand side is the list of, of the different activities that um, that are in the curator module and on the left are the uh, the two plus a bonus. Um, we haven't gotten to a bonus activity just yet this week in the webinars, but uh, we'll we'll see what we can do today. Awesome. Uh, and so uh, the, we take a different approach, um, as Alyssa sort of mentioned here, and that we get to do more hands on activities. And Alyssa, I don't know if you want to start with this one and and work through it. Um, so sure, that consider yeah. this activity. Yeah, OK. Um, so the consider this activity um, is one of the first ones that you'll you'll come up against in the module content. Um, and what it asks you to do is search um, for an openly licensed image using different uh, search strategies and sites. Um, so what we would like you to um, to do, we have some links that we we will share in the chat here with you. Um, let me just pull these guys up. I'm going to have to do them one at a time because it doesn't like me just copying and pasting what I have in this document already. So just give me, bear with me for two seconds here. Um, so we've got a list of some different um, open um, image websites that we're putting into the chat here. Um, and these sites are free for you to access. Um, the images that you find here are free for you to reuse and uh, and some of them you can adapt and, and you know, add things to them or, or, you know, Photoshop them or whatever program uh, it is that you use for um, image editing. Um, but I'm just, this is the last one I got. Okay, now I can focus on my words. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, these websites are fantastic uh, places to start. So if you're looking for um, some images that are professional, um, uh, one of my favorites is Unsplash. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, do know about Unsplash at this point. Um, it's been around for a little while. Um, and one of the nice things about these sites is when you find an image that you, you like, um, what ends, uh, what ends up happening is you get um, a little snippet of information um, that you can use to cite your source. Um, so you can um, give attribution back to the author. Um, and that kind of brings me into a little bit, like you might be wondering, like, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, so with the, with the open license or with the open images, um, what we have um, associated with those are what's called Creative Commons licenses. Um, now you'll see on um, in the list of the uh, the links that I put up there, there is a search for um, the CreativeCommons.org uh, website. Uh, so Creative Commons is a global uh, nonprofit organization, and they have devised a system um, that allows uh, creators to share their work openly and freely. Um, but it also these licenses that they've created uh, do some of them do have um, limitations associated with them. So as the creator of a work, um, you can apply one of these licenses to your work. Um, and that tells, you know, if I were to search something of Bert, it, it would tell me what Bert would like me to do with that work if I can reuse it or if I can adapt it um, and, and, and those types of things. Um, so like I said, like we don't get too in depth today on uh, Creative Commons, but if you're looking for more information, um, you're always welcome to, to join in a, a session or, or have a look at the module content as well. Um, so hopefully while I, I've been talking there, um, you've had a chance to, to click on some of the links and have a look around. Um, so essentially um, what this activity is geared to do is just kind of give you an introduction of um, as to where to go to find um, free open content. Um, now in this case, uh, these are all um, image uh, sites, um, but OERs uh, and open educational resources come in all different forms. Uh, so we have, uh, you can find open textbooks, you can find open course modules, like full course modules, um, you know, lesson plans, assignments, um, and those types of things. And um, 
so we're just starting out today with uh, just with a quick image search and uh, see what you want, what you'll come up with. And maybe we can ask, um, you know, if people if people feel comfortable doing this, you don't have to, but if you feel comfortable sharing your image even through the chat, then please do so. Um, you know, I know it's uh, putting people on the spot, but we're trying to just create this a bit more of a hands-on uh, experiential mm -hmm. feeling during our vibe uh, practice uh, during this session. So just, I'll let there be awkward silence for a couple of seconds. And if anybody wants to jump in, you're more than welcome to. All right. <laughs> no takers. We're we're all good. Um, so I I've pasted um, a link in the chat as well, and this link um, takes you to the submission space um, for this activity. So um, when you have an image um, that you would like to use, you can go to this link, um, and it will take you to what we call the activity bank. Um, oh, to share the image in the chat. Oh, okay. Do you just have the link that you could link to, Irene? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, let's have a look at Irene's picture before I talk yeah, about the activity sure. bank. Um, yeah. Hey, right on. Nice. Perfect. Did you? Um, great. Did you want to jump on the mic and, and have a go at it and, and give some context around it? Or if not, that's OK, too. OK, sorry about that. I'm not oh, really okay. familiar with Zoom. Oh, no, that's <laughs> so, totally OK. So it, it takes me a little bit. Um, um, I, when I'm looking for pictures, I do want to find ones that that represent a, a wider range of experiences. And um, I noticed when I first started trying to find active pictures of people teaching, you know, that idea of people being up at the board or at the front of the class, it was really, really easy to find white men. Not so much easy to find, uh, you know, females or people of color at the front of the classroom. So I hadn't checked into Unsplash in the last little while to see if that situation had improved, but I found this lovely picture there. Um, yeah, and great. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. It's it's funny, right? Like um, I find like most of Ooh. most of the teachers we I interact with are are women. And so to to not be able to find those in a repository um, I just find a little bit weird, I guess, but you're right. Um, the Unsplash actually has um, um, improved their diversity selection quite a bit. So um, it's, a, it's a really great um, spot to come. Um, and maybe I think check out Doreen's. Doreen's, well. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if you can hear me yeah. at all. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I teach human resources. Um, so what I find, and again, I'm just new to a lot of these resources, but what I look for are um, real pictures of diversity that aren't, um, can I say cartoonish or um, you know, so when I when I found this right away, it just brought me to one of my um, lesson plans where we talk about diversity and inclusion. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, searching, you know, this is something that we might talk about as we go through this um, uh, webinar is that you start to change your search habits too. one of the things that you realize about being a curator, right, someone who's kind of uh, you know, selecting specific materials um, to, to use in your class, you get better at knowing how to search. 
And, um, you know, one of the things that the curator module talks about are the, the Boolean uh, phrases uh, and, and um, so your and, and your or and your, um, uh, you know, other terminology that you're using to group together to find uh, the, the specific resource that you're looking for. So there, there's a couple like steps, I think of it as, you know, you have to familiar yourself for, I, I found that I had to familiarize myself with a the different OER uh, websites that I could go to even just specific for images and then I had to then understand how to search it and then it was sifting through all that search uh, search material so um, there's uh, Alyssa just put in a, a, a link there for uh, helping understand it or what to use for for Boolean uh, uh, searches but that that it becomes a part of uh, your more regular routine practice of understanding how to search and even still like even though I know <laughs> you know what I'm supposed to do it still takes a little bit of time to learn that so uh, mm -hmm. I think that's great though I love unsplash and this is a great photo and you're right it's getting away sometimes from that that sort of that those silly cartoons they have their place um, but it's nice to find something that's a bit more uh, Almost like personal, like realistic and and uh, and uh, relatable. So that's great. Thanks yeah. for for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So, Bert, just before we move on, um, I would just like to show people um, the the Google search um, component to uh, the searching for OERs as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. One one kind of one of the best kept secrets I think about Google. Um, I'd like to show you. <laughs> did you want to did you want to share it or do you want me to keep sharing? Uh, no, you can keep sharing. Um, so if you just want to Google um, uh, something random, um, teachers, education, something along those lines. Um, now you may know how to do this already, but I find like a lot of people don't know how to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, just show you a way that you can easily search the Google library um, of images. So I'll get you to click on images there, Bert. Um, and uh, for, for Creative Commons licensed materials. So if you can't find something on Unsplash or Pixabay or, or the other ones that I've put into the, um, the chat there, you can come to Google and search for, an, for images. Um, now, what you want to do is um, along the right of that bar, if you click the uh, is it more or tools, it's tools, tools. Uh, so this tools button is really handy because it has a couple of different um, advanced filters for you. So if you were looking for, say, a specific color of a picture, like if you had a like a color theme going and you wanted to search for a, a color, you can you can search for pictures of a, of, of a shade or a hue um, that will um, sort by those. So there you go. There's a lot of pictures with red in them. Um, so you can search by uh, the colors, the types, um, when the picture was was um, was posted, um, and then the yeah. So if you're looking for stuff that's really current um, and and happening right now, you can you can look at for those. Um, and then the 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 last one there on the right is the usage rights. Um, and this filter um, allows you to create it to look specifically for Creative Commons images. Um, so you'll see when Bert clicks that. Um, it's going to bring back green stuff that's been posted within the last month and Creative Commons <laughs> licenses with them. So he's put three filters on there. Um, so these images, um, when you click on them, uh, you know they they will be available for you to uh, download. And uh, you just need to include the author's information or the creator's information with those. And, and you can reuse those knowing that, you know, you have the permission to. Um, a lot of images that you just, if you do a Google search and you grab an image, some of those may have copyright associated with them. Um, and there is a warning about that when you, when you look for pictures that, you know, check out the copyright on these before you reuse them. Um, when you use this Google filter, um, it, it narrows or it, it almost eliminates the, the chance um, of you 
misusing someone else's work. So um, I find this is like the best kept secret of, uh, of, of the Google world. So I just wanted to give you that strategy as well so that when you're looking for things, you know, you can be sure that you're, you're searching for the appropriate um, usage rights. Um, the other nice thing too is that um, all the Microsoft products, I know some schools are Google and some are Microsoft, all the Microsoft products um, also uh, give you a checkbox when you search for images uh, through their online pictures. Um, there is usually a checkbox that you can, oh, you're going to go to it. That's cool. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. This is the um, on online version. That. So I'm not sure if it still has okay. the same component, but yeah. So the um the pictures from I think maybe hit uh, Bing Bing pictures, yeah. Um, scroll down just a wee bit. Yeah. Okay. I think these I think ones it's from in the stock. I think because I think when you search stock, it gives you. I could be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I'm used. I'm used to looking. I think. Yeah, I'm used to looking at it from the desktop versions. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that the online versions are looking for Creative Commons images because I do see a lot of the same. Like when you went there, I did see a lot of the same images that I would see if I used my my Word app. Um, so I, I think the online version is just by default looking for create. Oh, there we go. There it is. So I had to click there into a is. specific specific channel of, of or genre of picture. There you go. Okay, Yay. perfect. Um, so yeah, when you search for a topic and you find um, a category that you would like, you can then filter by Creative Commons licenses. And that's, um, that's uh, standard across all the different Microsoft apps as well. So PowerPoint, Excel, well, I don't know if you can use, use pictures in Excel, um, but yeah. So that's the other kind of little tidbit um, tip to, to give you so that you're, uh, and with the, with the word, uh, sorry, with the Microsoft products, um, when you bring a picture into the document, it also brings the citation with it. So you don't have to worry about, um, like if you're citing it properly, um, or giving attribution properly. A lot of the times the ones in Microsoft just say, you know, author unknown, because they've just grabbed random pictures from, from obviously licensed, freely licensed places, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really great tool to have access to. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pick up where I left off there about the activity bank um, a few minutes ago. Um, so I did post a link in there to the submission spot for this activity. Um, and what it would, uh, what it asks you to do is um, through this, the different strategies or the different ways that we can search the repositories, um, what did you find, what did you do? Like, did you use any Boolean strings like the, the ands or the ors? I know we didn't really talk about those in, in detail, um, but, it, but the, uh, the module does go into, into a little bit more detail about those. Um, did you just search for uh, a keyword or did you search for multiple keywords? Um, so Bert here has gone to the activity bank page, the submission page for this activity. And as you go through the module content, you'll come across links that will take you to these spots. Um, so anywhere where you find an activity and you click on it, it takes you to the activity bank. Um, now the activity bank, you do need to have um, a separate login ID for. So you do need to initially create a username and a password. Um, and once that's set up, you can sign in. Um, and, and when you sign in, that gives you the ability to type your response. So you can add um, kind of your reflection and give some context around your picture. And you can upload your picture or paste the link, just like you did in the chat. You can paste your link into the submission field um, and, and you're done. You've already done one of the curator activities. Um, so that's all there is to it. Elsa, did you want to, um, I think you posted this in the chat. I'm just sort of searching for it here. Did you want to remind me uh, what link takes, um, you know, if people are wondering how do, how do they cite this, you know, in what way should it be cited? Um, is there the citation um, uh, sort of CC by uh, 
uh, is there that page where it gives you the list of different citations? Do we have that? I do. I have it in, um, um, it's in, it's in a presentation, like it's in a, in another presentation. So, um, I can get, um, I can get, well, I can get that page actually. Um, so you're I just think, meeting the different licenses and, and the, the meanings behind them. Yeah. And I think it's sometimes, you know, for, for example, Pixabay is, is, um, or sorry, Unsplash is a really simple one. They give you the citation, um, as is, it's really simple to understand. You can just grab it. Um, so if I were to go back to any of these images, uh, uh, I can download for free. And when I download for free, a little window will pop up and it says, you know, give a shout out to uh, Tim here. And so all I have to do is copy this, uh, you know, photo by uh, uh, Timon Stedler on Unsplash. And then I have that that I can post in. But sometimes it's it's good to just understand the difference licensing and um, it helps for when you're trying to cite it in uh, in a presentation and document what it, wherever it may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I did I did po post the link to the Creative Commons page where it does go through all of the different types of licenses and and what they mean. Um, so uh, if you just want to scroll down, uh, they give an explanation about their, um, the different layers of the, of the license. Um, and then it comes to the icons. So as you start looking in these repositories or searching for open resources, uh, you'll, you'll see this icon or the, one of these icons um, associated with the work. And it may be in the footer of a Word document. It may be on a web page. Um, but it's always good to keep your eye open for this gray and black and white um, uh, uh, icon because it means something. Um, so every license has a different combination of um, icons uh, that means slightly different things. Um, so the core, um, the core icon that is here is this is the um, it looks like it's hard to see on the screen just now, but it looks like a little person. Um, and that is the, the BY uh, license. And you'll see this um, icon with every single type of Creative Commons license. It's just a standard, um, it's a form of respect. You just give attribution back to the original author. Um, so it's just cite your source always when you're working with open resources. Um, and then uh, you'll also see some other um, icons that are associated with, um, there's one for share like. So the author says, you know, uh, you can use this work, you can remix it, you can update things, you can change things, but they want you to share it back. So if you, if you create any modifications, the expectation is that you will share your revised version of the original to a repository. Um, there is a more restrictive license that looks like the equals, uh, an equal sign, uh, two, two uh, hyphens or slashes or whatever you want to call them. I, I think of an equal sign, um, but that one means that, um, that no derivatives are allowed. So uh, the author of that work says, you know what, you can use it, give me credit, but don't change it at all. Um, so um, and then the final uh, kind of unique icon that you'll run across um, is the dollar sign with the slash through it. Uh, and the dollar sign with the slash through it means that you cannot use the work for commercial purposes. So you can't make money off of the, um, off of the use or the distribution of that OER. Um, a common question I get, well, our students pay tuition. So is, is the, you know, are we making money off of that resource? And the simple explanation is no, um, it doesn't qualify as non-commercial if you use it in an educational atmosphere because you are not putting money into your pocket when you share it with your students. Um, the school is gathering tuition, but the tuition is generalized for like everything. So um, the non-commercial um, icon is okay to use with um, when you're delivering materials if you're using supplementary resources. Um, and then the other couple that are on that list, they're just, um, just different variations and combinations of those icons. Um, so those are um, key things to kind of keep your eye open for 
um, as you go through some of these repositories and, and just know what they mean. So if you wanna save that link too, it's a great one to kind of keep in your back pocket so that if you're searching for something and you're like, oh, I don't remember what this means, you can just pull it up and, and um, have it right there for you. Yeah, that gives you a good indication, you know, when you're looking at images, you know, they're Creative Commons, but sometimes under the Creative Commons licensing, there are some, you know, slight differences that can impact how you um, are able to share that with, with your students or with other people. Um, mm. So it's just good to keep in mind. And I think that's a great resource that I, I just wanted to touch on. So thanks, Alyssa, for, mm -hmm. for doing that. Um, mm. We've kind of covered some of, you know, you know, most yeah these, you know, where do I start? We've kind of looked at those. We looked at Google and Microsoft and, and uh, by no means is this a real in-depth, uh, you know, uh, webinar to go right into it. Uh, that's for the, the, the modules. You know, if you join one of our modules, then you get a bit more time to dig in. The last one is a, a find your fit activity, um, which I don't know if we fully have time for. I think we're kind of close to it. Um, so, uh, Alyssa, did you want to, I know this is, uh, Alyssa is more, more uh, knowledgeable in the OERs than, than myself. So I've been, uh, extending it over to her. Sure. Um, if you want to bring up a web browser, I'm going to open the floor to our participants. Um, and, uh, we're going to put you to work, Bert. You're going to okay. do the work for this activity. That's good. <laughs> Uh, so if anybody wants to jump on the mic, um, how about we give Bert some suggestions um, of something to look for, uh, an open educational resource to look for. Bert, I'm going to have you go to, um, let's go to the Mason, um, or sorry, Oasis. Let's, let's go to, let's try Oasis today, O-A-S-I-S, -S, yeah. Uh, education? Oh, no, you know where we should go? We should go to the um, eCampus Open Library. Thank you. Um, yeah. That would be more appropriate, actually. Um, for <laughs> so where Bird is taking us is to um, uh, an OER repository that is hosted by eCampus Ontario, which is Ontario Extend's uh, parent company. Um, so this open library, um, if you can just paste that. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I just paste um, the general link at the top that, that will take you to this page and then you can find the low open library uh, on their main site here. Yeah, and you also see Ontario extends right beside it. So it's a great spot to go to get at all of the stuff. And I'll post, um, uh, repost yeah. this link so you can have a direct, it's just so people know sort of the step-by-step -step in case they forget. Perfect. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so if you're not, if you're not familiar with this space, this is the open library, um, and this is a repository, um, that has a whole bunch of different open resources. Um, and one really nice thing about the open library is that, um, over the last several years, um, the eCampus has been, um, uh, funding some development opportunities for, 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 uh, faculty and, and, uh, higher education um, per professionals to um, create local OERs. Um, so when we go, to, you can actually, there's three different sections to this. So you can look for them, you can customize some of them and you, and there's a space that helps you um, if you are in the, if you want to create your own OERs, um, you can visit that space. Um, but today we'll, we'll look at the find um, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just search the open library. Um, so these resources, um, you'll be able to look through um, using a, a key uh, search term. Um, so would anybody like to, to be a guinea pig? Well, Doreen teaches introduction to human resources. So what if we try to help find a OER for Doreen? That would be great. That is super nice. Um, Irene, that is really awesome. Um, I, I know there are some out there for sure. All right. So like Bert just 
showed you, you just enter key search terms. Now, he could have used some of the Boolean operators like quotations around them to make sure that both terms are included or an and symbol or, or whatever. Um, but with just using those two words, um, Bert has pulled back about 100 different results from, from the, the open library. Um, and you can kind of browse through and just have a look at them. Um, I'm not sure if, if these if these ones may hit or, or miss. Um, but that's kind of the thing with OERs too, is, is when you're searching, it is really hit or miss. Like some subject areas just, there aren't very many um, open resources just yet. So um, other disciplines, there's like tons of resources. Um, so, you know, those, those um, search strategies come in real handy when you're, when you're looking for something so that you can really nail down um, what it is you're looking for. Um, Doreen, is there like a specific uh, topic within, in your course that you look at? Let's take a look at health and safety, workplace health and safety, maybe. Okay. All right, so there, the food service industry does have some of those. Um, trying to see through. There's some health case studies. I also noticed some safe work practices. Um, like oh. there's, some, there's some good stuff. I, I, I'm seeing it, this is great. Great, okay. And this, this repository is just one of dozens. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different repositories out there. Um, and if you do dig into the module, we do have all those links um, to the different repositories um, listed so that you can, you can go to different places and search through them as well. Um, let's see what we come up with here. Yeah, so Bert, did you just wanna click on, on one of them? Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. Um, My apologies. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, any any one of them is okay. I was hoping we could find one that would help uh, <laughs> that would help narrow things down. But um, so when you go to a repository, this is pretty much standard across the board. You'll see kind of like a cover image, and you'll see a description about the resource. Um, the other really cool thing um, are those three icons that you can see kind of in the middle of the screen there. Um, you can download the resource. Uh, ECAM, the Open Library has a, a partnership with, um, I, I'm going to say Wilfrid Laurier, I'm pretty sure it's Laurier, um, to print on demand. So some of these books, if you or your students uh, would prefer a, a printed copy of the of the resource, you can do that. Um, they are you. They I'll tell you right off the bat, they're like way cheaper than. Um, they, there is a cost associated with the printing process, but it's like way less than a commercial textbook would be. Um, and you can also read the book online. So this one is a is a textbook, and it's been done in. Um, in Pressbooks, which is a, an e-textbook platform um, so that you can create your own textbooks. Um, and uh, these, these books, you know, you can go through them um, and, and search through them, have a look through the table of contents and, and just see um, what type of information you can find. Um, could I just get you to go back to the, um, yes, this page here. Um, oh. Too far. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So right underneath the title and the date published, you'll see that the license information is there. Now the icon isn't being used in this case, but uh, it does have the license listed as CCBY. Um, and it does provide you a link to the description about what that license means and, and tells you what you can do with it. So it's really handy to, to check that out and, um, and have a look at that stuff.
Um, so I think um, we didn't get to the to the to the hands on type of a component, um, and and hopefully though this is these have given you some new new ways to look and and to find things. Um, so Bert, we'll I'll just have you. Uh, oh, there's the places to search. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's numerous referatories, uh, repositories that you can have access to. Um, it, this is kind of what I was talking about when you're using OERs. It's almost like you got to take some steps into it in that, you know, first you figure out where all these are and which ones are going to be used for depending on the resource that you're looking for. Um, you know, Alyssa just sent me one this morning um, or just this afternoon when we first connected for one that was just strictly for music and uh you know that wasn't that was a new one for me so there's music there's you know there's uh, repositories for for uh podcasts for uh, pre-created assignments for quizzes like there's so many resources out there and i think you know this is just kind of skimming the surface but it gives you a plant seed for to see how you might be able to use oers in your in your teaching practice yeah and um, so just one thing to, to bring up, um, the website that you, um, you came to, I'll grab that link, um, where you got the, um, the registration um, for this uh, webinar, um, has a copy of the slides in both English and French. And the slides, uh, when you download those, you can, act, you can click on all of those links. They're completely active. Um, so uh, yeah, you're welcome to start with those and, and go from there. They're also listed in, in the curator module as well. So you have um, the music, yeah. uh, someone was just asking for the music one in oh, the uh, chat yeah. there. Yeah. Now this one does um, require you to log in. Um, so you may like, you can, you can look at samples of, of the music and you can play samples like, um, you know, as you're waiting for students to come into your online classroom or things like that. Um, but uh, you do have to create an account to log in before you can get at it, um, at the actual tracks that you can you can download. Um, so the curator module, like Doreen said, this is the rabbit hole um, module for sure. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, you're very welcome. So just it's kind of a recap, uh, you know, we just covered uh, the curator open educational resources, different different types of resources, different ways you might use them, uh, different places to, to go to find them. Uh, upcoming sessions specifically, you know, we offer this similar uh, what we're doing right now uh, in a more facilitated session. So uh, it kind of operates Monday, Monday and Fridays and uh, it goes 7 to 8 p.m. It will be up on our website. You can register or for the fall and registering doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, you have to be there or that you have to attend. It just gives you access to the, the D2L Brightspace um, LMS and it gives you a chance to kind of connect and communicate with other uh, faculty and, and educators throughout Ontario. And it's just a great opportunity to kind of work through the modules. And if you need some synchronous assistance, then, hey, that's what, that's what those sessions are for. Uh, Tuesdays are lunch and learn, so they're similar to what we're doing right now, and uh, they operate from 12 to 1 as we go through on um, on Tuesdays as we go through the fall. And then we'll also have Wednesday evening drop-ins, which are just realistically, they're there for, for anybody that just wants to have a quick question or have a quick conversation about something that they're working on, or if they have any uh, challenges, you know, with the activity bank or what have you, then they can check in with us at that time too, so... Uh, lastly, the Saturday extenders. Uh, these are if you want to do a crash course and kind of uh, do a, a module or a badge in a condensed uh, manner. So that's uh, from 9 to 12. And then you could sign up for a different session um, from 1 to 4. So if you can't go the whole day, uh, we've split it up now. It used to be that it was more the whole day, and now we've kind of condensed it into two sections. So lots of opportunity, lots of flexibility. And uh, yeah, there's, I, I was trying to stress that there's no timeline to it in that sense of, you know, if you, you join the facilitated sessions, um, you don't have to be there for all three. You could show up for one, you could show up for none, but it's, they're great opportunities to connect with others.
So thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, if you need to reach out to us, uh, once you're in that uh, Brightspace uh, account area, if you register, then you can reach out to us with these uh, email accounts. Or you can connect with uh, extend at ecampus.ca. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Tracy. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you so much for coming. And hopefully, we'll see you out at some of those sessions because we, we enjoy them. Yeah, thanks, Doreen. Thanks, Irene. Thank you. Have a nice day.